So uh, my name is Chris. I'm the second part of Codestic, and I'm going to talk about uh, JWT or JOT. Um, yeah, we already seen that. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, server-side authentication. There are basically two two methods we use in in the real life. It's uh, cookie paste and token-based auth. Um, I think probably everyone has used one of these two here, hopefully. Um, with cookie-based auth, it's, it's, we have a browser and a server, and the browser posts like uh, a user or a user identification and a password to the server. And this sets a cookie with normally a session ID um, which identifies the user. And, the um, session ID on a request, so on the second part down here we are requesting a resource. The cookie with the session ID is always sent to the browser and um, he has to find the session and deserialize it. Um, so with, um, there are some drawbacks um, with cookie-based authentication, so they don't work too good with uh, cross-domain cores. Um, actually, they with real cross domain they don't work at all. Um, we have to main, uh, keep a state on on server side, uh, which which makes it hard to scale. So the session store has to be scaled when you are uh, scaling the servers. It's just more complicated, um, and there are performance issues with looking up and deserializing sessions. Um, so with token-based auth, it's basically the same, but the server returns a, a access token, or however it's called in your application, and uh, the access token is sent to the so server on each request. It's the same like the session ID in the cookie, um, but this time we, depending on the token, we have just have to validate the token. However this looks. We have to go sure that's a valid token and the user using this token is allowed to do something. Um, there are some advantages. Um, it works on cross-domain, so that's not, not a problem. Um, tokens or basically signed tokens uh, are stateless. Um, in the case of chart, they are. Um, we don't need to, ha to have a state handled on the server. Um, they are quite flexible because if you've got a, a single page application and you're going to use it, uh, your API in an app, you don't have to be concerned about cookie jars and stuff like that. It just works with tokens. Um, and it's quite performant because you can uh, just perform some cryptographic stuff to validate the token and you don't have to do any lookups um, in a database uh, or session storage. Um, and another um, nice thing about to tokens is uh, you can easily decouple services. So you can have, a, in this example, an authentication server and use the token to make requests on, a, on another server which is, which is able to validate it. Um, so now coming to JOT, JSON Web Token. Um, currently, JSON Web Token, JWT, uh, JWT is an um, ITF draft. Um, I think they did about 25 revisions since January, so there's quite a lot of work going on. Um, it's basically pushed from um, a guy at Microsoft and some Mozilla guys. I think they use it for um, their persona stuff. Um, so why call it chart? Um, it's basically because they suggested in the standard to call it chart. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was quite confused. There's another standard which is called uh, JWE, and I was thinking about calling it Joey, but it sounds just really stupid. Um, the structure of a JWT or a chart token um, consists of three parts. Basically, there's a header. All the parts are base64 encoded. Um, there's a part containing the claims, the, the real payload data of the token, and a signature, um, which is usually a, a MECT uh, signature, and they are all separated by a dot. So that's actually a real token um, from a customer, so feel free to use it and find out where it works. 
No, it's it's actually expiring. So, um, yeah. First, to get to the header, um, in the, the header in this in in this case, it, it uh, contains a, a JSON object um, with uh, two keys. One is the algorithm key. It defines um, how the signature is generated and the type which defines what the payload is. So how we have to treat the payload of the token. Um, oh yeah, I already told that. Very good. Um, the claims are the real payload. Uh, in case of JWT, they are a JSON object and basically they con can contain everything. But there are say, some registered claims. They are, for example, um, the ISS claim for issuer, expiration, issued ad, um, all the stuff you need to to um, to perform your your logging mechanism, expiry mechanisms, um, and usually they contain the subject which identifies the user who's owner of the token. Um, like I told you, you can you can add as many claims as you want, but uh, you should watch uh, your token length. So it's uh, like keeping state on the client, and it's sent to the server every time. So basically, you have to you should keep it as short as possible. Um, the J, uh, JWT signature, um, the standard says there must be a, a HMAC um, uh, 256. Um, that's the standard. Um, each library should have implemented that. Um, and it's just generated generated by by taking all the base sixty four um, parts and um, putting it to the hash function with some secret. All right, um, there are quite a lot other um, algorithms available also for um, for asymmetric signing, um, which is quite nice if you don't like to to share the secret overall service, you can just, the authentication server has to generate the signature with the private key and just share public keys on the consuming service. Um, there's another standard defining all the algorithms, which is, which is JWA or CHOA, whatever. Um, <laughs> So working with uh, JWT, I'm just skipping the example because I'm running out of, ta out of time. So no example here, sorry. Um, what's interesting about tokens in general, or in this case, uh, JWT, is um, how do we expire them? How do we handle expiration or maybe use a logout? Um, there's no clear definition, and everyone is doing it a bit, bit different. Um, Basically, you can just remove the token from the client. That's the easiest way, and then it will expire, and no one can use it anymore. Um, you can do a token blacklist, or and what's really important, you should keep your expiry times quite short. But it's, I think it's the same with sessions; they shouldn't be too long. Um, too. Uh, one workflow we use for token expiration. I hope it doesn't take too long. Is um, Whenever you, you get a token um, in this part, the user authenticates with user and password, gets the token. There's a, a part in the token claims called JTI, which is defined to be a unique identifier for each token. And what we do, we put the JTI to a JTI registry and keep it there. And it's a store which can handle expirations. I think MongoDB can do it since uh, 2.2. So you can set an expiry, and it, ex it expires on its own with the same time that the token expires. And um, before expiration, the client has to refresh the token, and the old one is deleted, and he gets a new one, which is newly signed with a new JTI, which is set to the JTI registry there. And um, the token is valid during the whole expiration time. And there's no check 
uh, going to be to the JTI registry on each request. So because with the signature we can make sure that the token is valid and the user is allowed to use it, we don't have to check back to any registry. So we, we don't need that additional database request like a session lookup uh, we, we have with cookie-based systems. Um, and you see here, here the token just expires and the expiration date or timestamp is in the token too. So we can see here on application server level that it expired without looking it up in the JTI registry. So we keep the, the workflow really, uh, the, we, we save a lot, um, a lot of requests to the JTI registry. Um, and if we like to have something where the user logs out, um, basically it's all the same up here until we get a refresh token and then the user here tries to log out, he sends the token, he has to use the token for logging out, and we actually remove it from the JTI registry. And then um, the token will be valid in this time, so uh, invalidated token will be valid until expires, but the user is not allowed anymore to refresh it or and, and uh, get a a new token which expires in future. So that's the only drawback of, of, um, of this workflow that um, by, <laughs> by saving or by not looking up the JTI registry all the time, we, um, we save a lot of requests to the database, but the drawback is that the token is after logout um, valid for the rest of, ex of its expiry time. So, but uh, in our case, the expiration time is quite short, and when we can deal with that. So, um, this is on GitHub. Um, the talk. There's some further reading. A lot of standards. A really nice uh, thing is J JWTIO. It's from Auth Zero. Um, it's a big overview overall JVT labs and ellipse and implementations um, on all languages you can get. Yeah, um, the Auth Zero blog is a nice resource if you like to read more about JWT, JWT or chart. Still don't like that. Um, yeah, any questions? Mind going back to the paper example? The which one? The uh, claims? Yeah. This? Um, what I had where you explained the fields. Are you sure X and IAT is assigned right? Sorry? The, the labels. Yeah. So X is. Expiration uh, of the token. Yeah. It's when it's issued no, and IAT is when it expires? No. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it switched. Sorry. <laughs> Blame on me. <laughs> 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 yeah, come on. Hey, when you come on, feel up. Some people, some people really reach a flight. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a great honor. <laughs> yeah. How much time would you suggest for the timeout? Yeah, it's 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 the same with sessions. So. Um, Basically, if you if you have a, a rich client and the client has um, has focus in the browser, you can refresh the token whenever it's going to be expire. So that's not a problem. It's just it's just a thing. Um, uh, what what would you? How long? How happy is the user with not being on the page and being locked out after coming back? So uh, I would say, uh, yeah, it's the same with sessions. So maybe. Two hours, four hours. Don't make it a day, probably. <laughs> yeah. But you can have also multiple tokens, right? So one yeah. for uh, one that expires quite soon, and uh, another yeah. one that expires maybe tomorrow. Yeah. But the second one, the longer one, uh, long living token, is not valid for all operations. So you could have. You you can do that. Yeah. It's, um, there are claims defined in the claim registry. 
um, where, where you can um, do a more, or where you can define a more specific on a resource level uh, definition where the resource can check if uh, the token is allowed for this special resource. And basically you can add claims, whatever you want, so you can just design your own uh, token workflow. Have you heard of uh, password blast? The idea of password blast? No passwords, there's a password that's going around a couple of months ago. Someone heard of it. It's uh, also related to tokens, and the idea was not having passwords anymore, drop all passwords, and just send a uh, short delivery uh, token via email, mm -hmm. and then um, you can log in, and then you get a long lived mm -hmm. token afterwards. So you don't need any passwords. Yeah. That was a quite interesting idea. Just get rid of all the passwords. Sounds good. <laughs> so you still have to log in somehow, does it? You still have to log in somehow to use it. Here for the login, you would just put your uh, email address and then say, hey, login, and then you get the, the short lived token via email. And then you, yeah. But oh, the, the okay. Link, and then you so you use a different screen. channel here. Sorry? So you use a different channel. Yeah. Okay, cool. Channel. Email or SMS or whatever. Cool. Anyone else? Thank you.